resilience we can define as the ability to minimize the effect of difficulties, crises, traumas, all kinds of difficulties. Minimize the effect of these difficulties on us and to recover quickly from these difficult or challenging situations. It was like the fall of 2009. We knew that I was going to be deploying to Afghanistan the following spring, but then we also found out he was going to be deploying. Before he left, we would have really tough conversations that he would say to me things like, what happens if I come home without my legs? What happens if I come home without an arm? What happens if I don't come home? He was on a mission with his squad and they were in a vehicle, it was a mounted patrol. And they came to somewhere where he wasn't sure if they should keep driving or if they should get out. So he got out, and as soon as he got out, an IED exploded. Resilience is gonna be the variable that enables each one of us to overcome setbacks and navigate our way around obstacles. All of us are gonna encounter times in our lives where we get knocked off course. And learning resilience and enhancing the resilience we already have is what's gonna enable us to get back on course and create the kind of lives we wanna create. Resilience is something that is available to anyone. People certainly, as you can see just by looking around and knowing people, people are certainly different in terms of the degree of resilience they have, but they're not stuck in one level of resilience. People can improve their resilience. They can learn to be more resilient over time. Everybody has that capability. Sitting in the belly of a military aircraft uh, for many hours with your spouse's casket in front of you is definitely one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. When you talk about grief and like losing somebody who, I mean, we were madly in love, just best friends, laughing all the time, kissing till people got sick over it, talking about the future, just couldn't get enough of each other. And so it's for that to be taken away, it's really hard to put into words, but I just was trying to get through it the best way I could. Something that I was really scared of for some reason was going home to our house because Eddie was supposed to get home before me. So, I mean, I had to go back and face things, so I did. Did I lose my love? Absolutely. But I still have a lot to be thankful for. People who are naturally resilient, the research shows, um, tend to experience um, negative emotions just like the rest of us. They experience, you know, anxiety and sadness and, and irritation and anger. But um, they're also, in difficult circumstances, they also see the good in those circumstances. They're able to see, well, at least I'm not in this alone and um, appreciate that. Or they see, well, you know, this is a difficult situation, but this too shall pass, and I'll learn from it along the way. And that sort of more nuanced, emotionally nuanced profile it seems to be, you know, the standard operating procedure for resilient people. We can always look at the things around us and, you know, focus on the negative, but there's just so much good. Oh, you're 
good. Did you brush your teeth? Yes. Good job. You're all ready to exercise, huh? <laughs> all right, ready? Set, go. Up and down, one, Four, down, one, two. two. 3, 4, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, Stop. 3, 33. So you think you're on this path and you kind of have this life planned out somewhat and uh, things are just completely turned upside down. 6, yeah. 7, 8. And so now, the short-term things that I was really had on my mind were, number one, my children. Not that I wasn't a good mother before, a strong woman or whatever, but I just felt like if they ever needed me, they sure need me now. How'd you get so strong? What? Whoa, mine are not that big. Are they? Nope. Oh. Without the connections and the relationships of my kids, my army family, my personal family, I'm not really sure where I would be, but I know for sure that I am where I am today because of those relationships and connections. Relationships are really important in the lives of resilient people. When you strengthen your relationships with your family, your friends, your coworkers, people in your community, you have a foundation to rely on when you need some assistance. And if you're the kind of person who's established these good relationships, you can feel comfortable in asking people for assistance when you need it, when the going gets really tough. Being resilient is really a vital um, skill for day-to-day -day living because every day we're faced with you know ups and downs and unexpected circumstances and resilient people are the ones who are able to navigate those adeptly and efficiently and, and um, creatively solve problems and we also know that people who are able to do that kind of navigate day-to-day -day life up and down situations are um, they're more satisfied with life they're um, more engaged with life, they're more um, compelling to those around us. Something that I've always thrived on and that makes me happy is helping other people. And so I just needed to figure out career-wise how to do that in a different capacity. I felt like as a, a widow, as a surviving spouse, that wears the uniform, maybe I could bring some value to that. As difficult as it was to talk about my experience, I started to realize the value far outweighed the difficulty in telling the story. I think it's extremely important that people learn these kinds of skills to manage difficulties better. For the individual, of course, it means a life with less anxiety, it means a life well-lived. It means a life where you don't have to worry so much about what's going to happen in the future. Um, it means better relationships because you're not so on edge about things that are happening to you. I mean, it has all these, these good outcomes for the individual and the people around the individual who's resilient. We know that resilience is built up on a number of basic competencies, basic attributes of an individual. Things like self-awareness and self-regulation and optimism. And that those attributes are absolutely things that we can develop in people by training skills. There's no age at which it's too late to develop your resilience skills. Resilience can be taught. Um, I didn't realize that until I, you know, was taught it myself. I didn't buy into it at all. I was like, I'm already resilient. I've been through a lot. There's nothing that you can teach me. And I really quickly saw improvements in 
the way I was communicating with people that I really care about. I was noticing the good things around me quite a bit more than the not so good stuff, which is there regardless. I've had countless students that were very hesitant and just didn't think that there was anything in this for them. And once they give the stuff a try themselves, it never fails that they kind of reach back and say, you know, hey, Sarn Laredo, you were right. I mean, this is stuff that I wish I would have had years ago in my relationship or years ago in my career. I really think that I would be a better person today. And my response is, well, I mean, we've all got to start somewhere. So, you know, this is going to make you a better person for tomorrow. So just focus on that.